Hi Bob, this is Barron. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of your e-bike here. So, set of keys, these are two identical keys, round style, to turn the bike on. Key in and turn to the right, and you can take the key out, and the controller will turn on. Initially it says BMS, that's just recognizing the, the, the battery management system. Okay, and it starts out always in eco mode. That's low power mode. Um, trip distance uh, there, that's just the, the distance since you last reset. Uh, up on the top right hand corner, you see 93T. That's uh, 94 degrees, uh, that's the motor temperature. Um, down at the lower left hand corner, you'll see 0.00A, that's your current, battery current. And then below that you see 65%, that is your battery charge state. Um, and then up a little bit higher on the left you'll see 77V, that's your battery voltage. Uh, fully charged would be close to 84 volts. And fully discharged would be about, um, about 65 volts or so. Uh, and then at the very top left, uh, 0 watts um, currently. Okay. To change power uh, settings or power profiles, press the up button on the controller. And so now you're in normal mode. If you press up again, you're in boost mode. And if you press up one more time, you go back to eco. And it just cycles through those three settings. To view the statistics, press the right button. And it brings you to this page. And you can see the uh, maximum statistics, uh, 60 miles per hour. Um, on the right, you can see the maximum uh, power, 10.3 kilowatts. Uh, so this is a 10,000 10, watt e-bike. Uh, amp hours, watt hours, 66.1 uh, watt hours per mile. That's uh, based on the average from the last reset of this uh, page battery voltage on the bottom. Okay, if you press the right button again, this is your battery um, cell voltage. So this is your 20 cells. You have a 20 cell lithium battery. Uh, so these are all 20 cells. And uh, down on the left of the screen, you see the, the low range of this display. Uh, currently at the current battery voltage, the low end is 3.87 to 3.86 volts and the upper end is 3.89 uh, and in the middle you'll see the voltage, uh, the, the, vari the variance of the cells, the voltage of the cells. So we are at 0.19 volts, or I'm sorry, 0.019 or 0 0.020 volts. That's the, ver that's the variation from low to, uh, to high. Of your uh, of your various cells, anything below 0 0.025 uh, is is in good condition. Um, if it's greater than 0 0.025 volts of variation, uh, I do recommend that you fully charge it and let the cells uh, balance. And then over on the right, it shows the the overall battery charge state. Pressing the right button again brings you to the diagnostic screen. Um, this tells you your MOSFET temperature, uh, your hull uh, sensor positions in the motor, motor temperature. Um, I believe it also has uh, the uh, voltage, the hull voltage. Uh, if you're going to charge, um, on this screen, you would press the, the up button and then plug in your charger. The charger on the bike, or the plug-in port, is here. There's a little cover that slides out of the way. And that is your, that is your charger, charge port. And then your charger is a Meanwell RSP1000 power supply. Okay plugs into standard 110 outlet and then the white cable plugs into the bike okay 
So three pins line up. So you plug that in. And now if you're still on this page here, and we'll also plug it in. Okay, power supply is on. So now you can go ahead and press the up button. And it'll sense the charger and begin charging the bike. So now it's in charge mode. You'll see it says charging CV mode, that's constant voltage. And actually it'll, it'll once it gets up to full voltage, it'll change to constant current mode uh, until it gets to the peak of about 84 volts. And then it'll change back to CV mode, the constant voltage mode, until it the charge uh, current trickles off to near zero volt, uh, zero amps. Okay? So that is charging, it is currently charging right now. And it's charging at about 20, 21 amps uh, from the charger, uh, which is about a thousand volts. Or, th I'm sorry, a thousand watts. Okay, uh, controls. So right hand is your domino throttle, okay? This is a resistors type throttle. On the left, you have a, okay, a little lever here. This is actually a thumb throttle, and this is your regenerative braking. This is a variable regen braking setup. So if you want light braking, you would just press this down a little bit. It'll cut off the power to the motor, and uh, the braking will actually uh, make the motor stop. We'll also recharge the battery. You can, if you want to brake more forcefully, you just press that down further. Um, so that's the regenerative or the motor braking, that little button there. Uh, the hydraulic brake levers. Um, initially we had those set up to, to also engage the regen, but because of the domino throttle issues that we had, um, we ended up just using this, uh, this, this lever here for the for the motor braking so now these are only mechanical the 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 uh, hydraulic brake system is only mechanical so it's only your backup or your fail safe brake system uh, i would encourage you to use the regenerative braking as much as possible get a good feel for you know stopping distances as you're riding at, at various speeds um, and really get comfortable with using that regenerative braking because that will save your battery it will uh, extend the life of your uh, or the the range of your bike uh, because it's using that braking force to recharge the battery also it'll save your mechanical components of your disc brakes um, obviously using the motor to brake you're not using the mechanicals and so there's no wear uh, if you're only using the regenerative braking lighting so on your rear you have a tail light um, the lights are fairly um, dumb, I should say. They don't necessarily turn on with the, the, the controller, so you have to physically turn them on and off. They have uh, two working modes and one off mode, and they just cycle through. So you've got the constant on, flashing on, and I, I actually prefer the flashing on light myself when I'm riding, and then off. And then same thing with the front light. The switch for the front light is right here, which turns the light on. Pressing the switch again gives you a flashing. This is a 15 LED, 15 watt LED. Okay, and it cycles through two on modes and one off mode. Okay, the lights can turn on without the controller being turned on. Uh, which does allow them the potential to drain the battery all the way down. So be sure and check at the end of every ride that your lights are turned off, uh, both front and rear, uh, when you put your bike away for the day. Uh, if by chance you leave the lights on, uh, you actually could drain the battery all the way down and that would be very bad for the battery. Dual crown fork, this is the uh, Rock Shocks Boxer World Cup, uh, 200 millimeter rotor. Um, I'll
tidy up the uh, the wiring a bit uh, before I send it out to you. For the front here, rear shock, rear disc is also 200 millimeter rotor. It's a Muxus 3K turbo motor with a three turn winding. So it's just thumb screws. So we'll take all those off. Okay, so side cover comes off. Okay, and there's your battery pack. This is your BMS unit here that balances your cells. Uh, this is the custom wiring harness. Uh, the wiring harness, you'll see numbers uh, 5 to 8, okay, 9 to 12, 13 to 16. Those are your those are your battery bank cell portions. Uh, so starting at the at the negative side, you'll have cells one through four, which are the first two packs. Then you'll have cells five through eight, which are your second two wired in series. Nine through twelve, thirteen through sixteen, seventeen through twenty, sequentially uh, wired in series. Your pack build is a sixteen amp hour multi star pack four S. Uh, four cells per individual pack and then those individual packs are uh, wired two in parallel for six uh, for 32 amp hours and then five packs in series for a total of 20 cells so uh, so 74 volts nominal 32 amp hour pack this is your um, this is your circuit breaker this is your DC 100 amp breaker uh, right now it's it's in the on position to switch it to off you have to use a a small screwdriver to to kind of flip the the in the tab in the off position and then a screwdriver to flip it back on um, I removed the uh, the the handle on that just to keep it from accidentally tripping uh, inside and uh, just as a safety precaution This connector right here is uh, the tap for your lights. Um, if you decide to add a, a DC to DC converter, this, uh, this tap goes directly to the, the full battery voltage. So at fully charged, it's 84 volts. The lights do run on that full 84 volt voltage. Um, the lights uh, are able to run from between 15 to 100 volts. So those run directly from the full voltage of the battery. So these are just Anderson uh, Anderson PP45 connectors. So positive and negative. So that's your battery tap. Uh, I'm sorry, your lighting tap. Uh, and then up in there, okay, that is your that is your uh, ignition. Okay. The controller is actually down at the bottom here in this in this uh, cage here. Uh, it's a the Adapto MIDI controller. It's the medium powered controller uh, covered by this shield here. Uh, also back in here, you have the charging coil, which converts the power supply voltage, which in this case is 48 volts, converts it to the appropriate battery voltage of 84 volts. So it's uh, it's like a, a buck boost converter. It just boosts the voltage to charge the battery and that's all uh, built into the, the bike frame here. The front panels are also removable as are the opposite side panels. This, this panel still has the protective film on it so I'll let you peel that off uh, when you get the bike. Uh, drivetrain single speed uh, front chain ring and seven speed rear uh, freewheel okay. uh, for shifting it's just a standard trigger shifter here uh, right now it's in gear seven WTB pure uh, bicycle seat charge status so we've already increased the battery voltage by about a volt and a half. It's at 79.4 now uh, in climbing. Uh, so the charger uh, charger works pretty uh, efficiently. Um, if you fully discharge the battery, 
uh, to the point where the bike cuts out or the controller cuts out to the low voltage cutoff. Uh, you could expect a charge time of uh, close to three hours um, with that thousand watt charger. Uh, your total watt hours for the for the battery is 2.3 kilowatt hours. So in theory, it would take 2.3 hours at 1,000 watts to fully charge the battery. Although once you get up to that 90% uh, charge state, then your current drops off and you get to that constant voltage charge mode, the CV mode, uh, and so the, the charge rate slows down a little bit. So that does extend your charging time nominally. All right. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, it was uh, an experience building it. The the Adapto presented a few uh, uh, new challenges for me, but uh, we worked through it, and I appreciate your patience. Have fun with it. Love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'll have lots more videos coming in the future, and so. Uh, if you want to stay up to date with uh, everything I'm doing, uh, please uh, click the subscribe and uh, enjoy.